Good morning and welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this, the 12th Sunday of Trinity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with, with us. us. Yes, the Lord most definitely is here at St Francis Church, where I'm joined by Leslie, and I do hope you can sense him there at home with you. We are beginning to get used to this new pattern of worship, I hope. Um, just to complicate matters though, in September we have changed the locations of the services from what it is in the magazine. Every week in the pew sheet we will write out where the services are the following week, but next week the 8 o'clock service, for those who want an in-person service, is going to be at St Mary's and the 10 o'clock at St Francis, and the 10 o'clock service online and at St Francis will be non-Eucharistic, so there won't be a communion, but there will be at the 8 o'clock on Sunday at St Mary's, and at the Wednesday afternoon service on the 2nd of September at 10.45 at St Mary's. So if you do want to come for a communion service in a quieter setting, then do come along to St Mary's either 8 o'clock on Sunday or Wednesday morning at 10.45. We will then alternate where each service is during September, so the location for each week will be different alternating between the two churches. Let's begin to prepare ourselves for worship now with a hymn, which is at the name of Jesus, as we come before him now, recognising the awesome thought of who he is that we come before and what he's done for us. So do sing along if you'd like to. It is at the name of Jesus. which we'll say together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now taking up the reading sheet, which you should have from within the pew sheet, will say the collect for the 12th Sunday after Trinity together. 
God, God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now Leslie will bring us our first reading from Scripture. The reading is from Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to the end. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour, do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. But truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A prayer before I speak. Dear Father, open our hearts and minds to understand what you're saying to each one of us this morning. Amen. Get behind me, Satan. Surely this is the sternest rebuke to anyone in the whole gospel and to Peter, of all people. After all, in last week's reading, we heard that when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? 
It was Simon Peter who answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus then answered him, saying, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Yet now Peter is being treated as a personification of evil. Why should this be? So if we delve deeper, get behind me is the same verb used elsewhere for follow. So this is not just a rebuke. It's also a call to follow. Follow in the path of Jesus rather than the path of the way of the world. To set his mind on divine things not on human things. If we now want to follow Jesus and want to know what setting our mind on divine things means, we could not do much better than to read the epistle that we've been given today. Now, God knows that we're not perfect, and I, for one, fail in so many ways to do the right thing at the right time, indulging in human pleasures and distractions when I should be doing more profitable things for God. But a blueprint of guidance that we're given in Romans is a good reminder to point me in the right direction. It outlines what we should be doing and the advice comes thick and fast. So fast that it's easy to read it quickly and for no more than an idea of what is being said to stick in our minds. So let's for a moment take each statement and think about it. Let love be genuine. We must be sincere in showing our love to one another. This doesn't mean gushing love or a false love to those we don't really like, but a real open love and understanding for all. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. We must be able to discern good and evil. Even if we're called to love, we must not ignore or condone evil acts. And we must hold fast to what we believe is good, even if it goes against the grain of what is believed by others in society in general. It's not always to to stand up for what is right, especially in these days, when people are shouted down on social media if their views don't accord with that in the mainstream. Love one another with mutual affection. This is like family love. To love other Christians as if they were in your own family. Giving time to others, listening to them, to hear what they're really saying, not being judgmental and being in concern for their well-being. Outdo one another in showing honour. Whilst not putting yourself down, think of others better than yourself and show them respect. It can be easy to respect those who are powerful and have status in society, but not so easy when that person has no status. These are often important people in keeping society going, as we have seen with the key workers and how they have served us during lockdown. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit and serving the Lord. So be enthusiastic, an enthusiastic follower without being fanatical. After all, sometimes the fanatical people put people off the very thing they are promoting. There's no need to be a perfectionist and certainly no need to criticise anyone who you don't think is up to your standard. But have a faith that shows as a glow for the Holy Spirit, or even a bubbling over of a spiritual zeal. Remembering this is not to be self-serving, but in order that we might serve God. Verse 12 is packed with three statements. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Though we should be thankful for the hope that we have, that we're doing God's will, and in the hope in the second coming, meanwhile, there will be times when that hope is challenged by the troubles of this world. That can be especially true when we or those near us suffer. And as a nation, we're going through a time of suffering 
in so many ways, physically, mentally, and spiritually. We're being advised to be patient during a time of suffering and always bring our hopes and needs to God in prayer. Prayer is so important. Sometimes we might find prayer easy as we talk to God and other times it might seem a struggle as we feel we're not being listened to. But we must believe that God is listening and through our perseverance in prayer, we will get answers. Next, we have to contribute to the needs of the saints, where we see that there is a need and feel that God is guiding us to meet that need, whether it be financial or other resources that are required. We should give and we should do it with a generous heart. Extend hospitality to strangers, to visitors, whether known or not known to you. Hospitality is an indispensable expression of love. Paul was urging Romans not just to practice hospitality, but to positively pursue it, inquire after, look carefully for strangers and to meet their needs. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. As Jesus said to his disciples, they should bless those who curse us and even pray for them and do good to them. Sometimes this can lead to the turning around of the hardest of hearts. Certainly not an easy thing to do, but we should demonstrate goodwill to all people. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. We should be known as people who come alongside their neighbour in times of both celebration and joy, but also at moments of sadness where sympathy is needed. This can be easy at a time of happiness, but a challenge to come near people at difficult times, not knowing what to say and how you will be received. Yet so often it's just your presence, your showing concern, that is all that's needed. Live in harmony with one another. Having a common mind with our fellow Christians so that we can work effectively together in God's work. That must be especially true as we work as a united benefit to serve the people of West Wickham and the surrounding area. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be claimed to be wiser than you are. We should show a bit of humility and not be proud or snobbish and not condescending. It's not a question of status, for we are all children of God. The final verses are about our relationship with our enemies. We've already had do not curse. We then have the other strong negatives. Do not repay anyone evil for evil but live at, as peaceably with all. Never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God. And do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. It's all too easy to want to curse someone who wrongs you or even persecutes you. And it is natural to want to retaliate in the heat of the moment and even wanting to do something evil to someone in return for an evil. Or we may want to gain revenge in some way. But we are told to leave that to God, who sees all and knows all. And although it seems strange and it's difficult where there has been evil, a good act can change a situation and may sometimes change people's ways. What all these pieces of advice have been doing is showing us how we can help in bringing God's love into our world. As Hazel said last week, if we really are part of the church, built on the revelation that Jesus is the Messiah, we do need to free ourselves from the ways of this world and to allow our identity in Christ to drive our behaviours in our own lives and in our community. Amen.
now we have an opportunity to affirm our faith in the God who loves us and gave us the ability to be free of the ways of this world. So we say together, We, we believe, believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now James Pitt Payne is going to lead us in some prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Gracious God, open our eyes and extend our vision. Let us see what you would have us do, what we are capable of, and what we can do now. As you call us and empower us, make us worthy of our calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, move us, move our wills, and direct us by your Spirit. Help us and your whole church to know when to pull down and when to rebuild. Give us discernment and courage to do what you would have us do. We pray for churches and communities caught up in constant change. For those who have become restless and cannot settle at all. We pray for builders of communities and confidence, for our pastors and leaders. Lord, let your light shine upon us and dispel our darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who seek to provide good housing and places of beauty for city planners, architects and builders, for all who maintain parks and gardens. We remember all who live in areas of poverty and deprivation, for all who are in danger through not having clean water or proper health care. God bless all who give their lives in the building of communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who will form the new vision group in our united benefits that the Holy Spirit may inspire their discussions to find new ways of moving forward and bringing the kingdom of heaven to West Wickham. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are returning to school for the new term as they learn new ways of working to reduce the risk of COVID-19 infection. We pray especially for those who are fearful of returning teachers, parents, and students, that their fears may be calmed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have experienced flooding in the wake of Storm Francis, those whose hours, homes, and businesses have been affected. We pray for all the emergency services giving assistance, and especially the lifeboat crews who have to venture out on stormy seas to rescue those in difficulty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, teach us to reverence the earth, to have respect and awe towards each other in this time of the coronavirus. Allow us to wear our masks cheerfully Give doctors, nurses, and all NHS ancillary staff patience and cheerfulness in these times when a second spike is on the cards. We pray for all who have been humiliated and have lost respect for themselves and others. 
we ask for you to make our homes places of light and love, of grace and goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all who live in fear, through war, oppression or violence, all who have suffered abuse or contempt. We pray for all who have a poor opinion of themselves. We ask for your blessing on all whose lives are darkened by crippling illness, all who are afraid to venture, all who are unable to venture. We pray for friends and loved ones who are suffering at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks that you are the God who makes all things new. You heal and restore your people. We pray for loved ones who have passed through death and are in light and life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Francis and St. Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In that reading from Romans, we did have a long list of what we should be doing for God if we have our identity in Christ. And it is a long list. As Ken was talking, maybe there were one or two that you recognised that you weren't good at. I'm going to give you a moment now to come before God with those aspects of your behaviour at the forefront of your mind, because we come to our time of confession, a time to say sorry to God for not behaving in line with those ways that Paul outlines to us in Romans. So we'll say the words of confession from the liturgy sheet together. Almighty, Almighty God, God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. But we do know that we are forgiven by God as a result of Jesus' death on the cross. And so we have a time now to reflect on that while singing a hymn and asking God to stir us to action in the ways that Ken has outlined. So while I prepare the altar for communion and remembering Jesus' death on the cross, let's sing together, filled with compassion.
So we come to our time of communion and we use the words from the Eucharistic prayer on the service sheet. The Lord is here. His, His Spirit, Spirit is, is with, with us. us. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give thanks and praise. praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And so we've remembered Jesus Christ who unites us in his body and blood. As I receive the bread and wine on your behalf, please use this time to reflect on Christ's sacrifice and what it means to you, using the words of the act of spiritual reception on the service sheet. O oh, loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries, 
hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son. I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. Amen. Let's pray. God of all mercy, in this Eucharist you have set aside our sins and given us your healing. Grant that we who are made whole in Christ may bring that healing to this broken world in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We say the post-communion prayer from the liturgy sheet together. Almighty God, God we, we thank, thank you for feeding us, us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Um, we are now going to finish with a blessing, but um, a hymn. Uh, we're going to finish with a really joyful hymn remembering that we do have Christ in us and when we recognise that we can rejoice about it. So the hymn that we'll play after the blessing is Rejoice, Rejoice, Christ is in you. So now the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you, arise, a mighty army. We arise Now is the time for us to march upon the land Into our hands He will give the ground we claim He writes in majesty to lead us into victory The world shall see that Christ is Lord Rejoice, Christ is in you, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you, arise, a mighty army, we arise. God is at work in us, his purpose to perform, building a kingdom.
Cause you're proud.